Harry woke early the next morning. Although he could tell it was daylight, he kept his eyes shut tight. Hi everyone! Do you want to master reading your music score the same way as you read your book? Well, you're at the right place. In today's video, you will find explanation of musical symbols that will help you start making sense of everything in your music score. Let's get started. Reading music is a lot like reading a story. In order for us to understand it, we need to first learn the letters. The letters that we use to write music are called musical symbols. Just like you learn letters one by one in order to be able to read your first sentence, you will learn to read music the same way. Staff consists of five lines and four spaces. We use it to organize and notate the music. A measure, or a bar, is a small segment of a piece of music that is divided by vertical lines. Measure represents a very short musical idea or a motive. Think of it as a word in a story. It's a very small element that can have some sort of meaning on its own, but it gets more interesting as we add more context to it. You can think of bar lines as the punctuation symbol in a sentence. A bar line or a single bar line is a vertical line that splits musical piece into measures. It works similar to a space between the words in a sentence. A double bar line means that a certain section of the piece is finished, but there is still more to come. Just like a comma, it helps create a longer, continuous sentence in music. A final bar line indicates that the piece is finished. That's the end of the story. Repeat bar lines indicate that a part of music within the bar lines needs to be repeated. Musical notes are used to notate the duration and pitch in music. A note head is an elliptically shaped part of the note. It is important to note that every note has a note head. Note heads have the same shape but it can be colored completely black or white, indicating the duration of the note. A note stem is a vertical line directly connected to the note head. Stems may point up or down. That depends on where on the staff the note is. If the note is below the third line, the stem will point up. If the note is on the third line or higher, the stem will point down. A note flag is a curvy line which is always indicated on the right side of the note. A beam is a horizontal line which replaces the flags. This happens when two or more notes with a flag are written consecutively in the music. Rests indicate the silence in music. Each rest corresponds to a certain note duration or note value. An easy way to identify a rest is to look for a symbol on the staff that does not have a note head. Musical claps are indicated at the beginning of the music and they help us quickly identify whether the music will sound high or low. This is a G clef, or more commonly known as treble clef. Because the G clef is placed on the second line on the staff, that indicates that any note on that line is a G. Instruments and voices that use the treble clef will sound higher. This is F clef, or more commonly known as bass clef. Because the F clef is placed on the fourth line on the staff, that indicates that any note on that line is an F. Instruments and voices that use the bass clef will sound lower. A time signature is indicated at the beginning of a piece of music and consists of two numbers. It looks a little bit like a fraction, although there is no line written between the numbers. A time signature tells the musician how to group musical notes into measures. The top number represents the number of beats or pulses that the measure contains. The bottom number tells us which note we should count as a beat. Congratulations! You learned a large part of musical alphabet today. Now find a piece of music and see if you can identify these symbols.